Can I say, I think we were all impacted yeah. by your reaction. Well, I was a bit impacted by my reaction to that. Was, you know, I, I had all these things that I was going to say, you know, really intelligent, you know, journalistic stuff that I was going to say when I came out, and it all went out the window. And I kind of folded in the end. I think I brought myself undone when I was in there, to be honest. I'm going to climb into that in a second, but Ali, not me, Ali wanted to play it, so here we are. I did. Oh, OK. I won't we look, had I looked at it. Watch. Okay. I'm watching people on walkers, people with crutches, people in wheelchairs, people pushing their babies. <laughs> Pushing their babies in prams, four soldiers in car keys all stopped and saluted her. It's a majestic building and it is sombre. It's actually not sad. Um, these are not sad tears. They're I think they're tears that recognise what people are feeling as they go in there. And I think everyone brings what they bring. But you know what I felt like standing there looking? I thought she's still doing her duty. After all these years, she's been gone a week now. It's a week tonight. And she's still doing her duty. And I really think she'd just like to get back to her husband. You oh, can look. You can look back. Can I look oh, now? You can't, can look I can't back. see it. That really that got us. Oh, look at you. Yeah, no. no. It's, it's, it's so... It's just cold here, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Misery loves what company. Is... <laughs> 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 you know, blubbing is catching, and I, yeah. I haven't been able to look at it since yeah. I did. I didn't look at it when we did ACCA either. It was either. powerful. Mm. Mm. Really powerful. Why did it get you? Um, oh, well... I thought it was going to be oppressive in there. I mean, I, I wanted to go in there because I wanted to tell people what it was like because, you know, our viewers are, are at home and they're, they're not here, obviously. Yeah. Mm. And I thought it was going to be oppressive and I thought it, and it wasn't. And I thought mm. it was going to be maybe a bit musty because you remember when Meghan yeah. and Harry got married and she wanted to mm. light the scented candles around the church because it was musty? It wasn't musty. Mm. And when you walk in there, you walk... The door that we went in, you walk straight in and there's the catafalque right there and you're mm. right in it. And I think the mood in that hall, it's a big, vast hall, it's not cosy, mm. but the mood matches the mood in the queue. Mm. It's really warm yeah. and it's, it's, um, it's not joyous because it's not a joyful occasion, but it's very warm and very positive. Mm. And we had half an hour, so I, I, I got media access, which meant I didn't have to queue. I mean, I, I feel really guilty about not having to queue. Mm. Bex had to queue. Oh, ha, you know, Bex knows the royal family, goes to weddings, and I'm like, he should have called me. But he, <laughs> <laughs> and it, yeah, <laughs> Bex, why didn't you? You could have snuck in under my coat. <laughs> and, I, and, and we got half an hour, and we got to see a wow. change of guard, and so I'm, I'm watching all these people, and there's no noise. And it's so respectful, and the only noise is the occasional baby crying. And I was fine. And I'm thinking, I'm going to say all this when I come out. I'm going to tell everyone exactly what it's like in there and how nice it is and how important it is to go there. And I brought myself undone in the last few minutes when I had a thought about how she's still on duty. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I started blubbing when I was on the still on the stand in there and I blubbed all the way out and blubbed all the way out and there you go. That's what you're <laughs> I love that line though about still being on duty and her being back with Prince Philip I thought was really, really emotional. But to walk into that room, you just touched on it there, that is this enormous hall, yet here is this very small coffin. Yeah, and she's tiny. Well, she was little anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that we ever met her, but she was little. Mm. And, and so it is little, but she's a big presence mm. there, of course. And... But I just, I, I honestly felt, it was last night, it was sort of roughly mm. this time last night, that it was 11 o'clock last night, local time, that I, I got to go there. And, and I just thought, oh, hasn't she done enough now? Maybe she just mm. needs yeah. to, you know, yes. go be, yeah, you know? Mm. I don't, I, I think you're 100% right. And even, even in the days following, it was like, even though it's, it's, it's over for her, um, it just continues and, and, and there's just days of it. Um, mm. And I just thought, Mm. The, the, the she, of anyone who has ever lived, she deserves a rest. The commitment, the duty, the everything. Um, and, and I think that's part of the reason why people feel this connection with her, because mm. there's someone who's come along in life who gave their life, mm. you know, and, and people resonate with that, you know. And they're so positive in the queue. I yeah. mean, we did ACA last night from the queue, and, mm. and people had been queuing for eight hours at the point, to the mm. point that where we were, and goodness knows how long they're queuing by the time they get there now. 
And, you know, there are people with cankles. They've been standing for eight hours and they're not mm. complaining. They're still going. They've still got hours to go. And they're cheerful and they're making friends for life with the people next to them. And, mm. I, you know, it's, it's... And there was a fellow, I heard a fellow on Sky News, I think it was the other day, who said, she gave us 70 years, I can give her 24 yeah. hours. Oh, and I what thought, a beautiful line. Yeah, yeah I, know, mm. I know. I thought, yep, yep. It yeah. feels like a pilgrimage, and it's going to, and, and the and the funeral on Monday is going to be something else as well. Oh, yes, I, I think I'm so. looking forward to, to to watching it, but also, as you said and rightly point out, finally letting her go, go to rest. I think it's yeah. time. I, yeah. I think mm. she's, you know, I think she's done enough. Yeah. Um, mm. But I certainly think she's going out with the, you know, the send off that she deserved. Yeah. But don't you always think at funerals, you know, you go to a loved one's funeral and mm. don't you always wish that you'd said that, you know, that they were there? Yeah. yeah. Don't you think people should have their funerals before they die yeah. so they can hear how everyone <laughs> loves them? It's, I don't I know, it's my new idea. I think she how this was going to play out though. Do you think, so yeah, now, well, she choreographed a lot of it. I did. mean, you saw her driving, driving through the gates the yeah. other night with the lights on and that hurts. That was her idea. That she was wanted our, the lights on. That was our moment too, so wasn't it? So good to see you, Tracy. Um, and just um, so you're aware, at, um, at 9.30 tonight, I'm having my funeral at the Walkabout Hotel in London. I'd love you to be there, make a few speeches. We'll all say nice things. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> That's a are, we, are you on board Only with nice that? Things. <laughs> Only ever nice things. It's never going to happen with you. <laughs> <laughs> or you. Right, two co hosts. Say nice things. Honesty. Too That's many co hosts in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> love to see you. Good it's to a see beautiful, you beautiful moment. Welcome back. We are live from Buckingham Palace this morning with Royal Commentator Victoria Murphy. Victoria, good morning to you. Another, another big afternoon, wasn't hey, it, for you? Busy, yeah. uh, Tell us about the vigil. What did you think? So a big moment today. So the Queen's four children mounting a vigil as she's lying in state at Westminster Hall. It's kind of that last moment for them to have that moment of quiet reflection. It's very similar to the one that they did at St Giles Cathedral. Um, but there was a big difference, which was that Prince Andrew this time was wearing his military uniform. This is the only time throughout the whole 10-day mourning period that he's going to be wearing military uniform. He won't be wearing it at the funeral. And of course, we discussed this when it was first announced, and it did cause some controversy and some debate, particularly because at the time, Prince Harry was not going to be wearing military uniform at any moment. So it felt that this exception had been made for Andrew, but not for Harry, and the inconsistency there, especially with Harry's service in the military. But now we know that tomorrow night, at a vigil with the grandchildren, Harry will be wearing his military uniform. So that's going to be quite a moment to see that vigil tomorrow. I think that's going to be a, a really lovely moment for Harry. But just for a moment, going back to Prince Andrew, it's interesting that we have talked about this for so long, that it has been a headline. Yet I don't feel it overshadowed the moment. I don't feel it sort of, it, it took the attention away from the gravity of, of the siblings standing guard by the coffin this yeah. afternoon. I think that's an interesting point and I think if you look back to the memorial service at Westminster Abbey for Prince Philip and Andrew escorted his mother in and I think there was a question mark at that time whether people would want to go down the route of criticising Andrew when we were talking about a memorial service. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. actually it was interesting because a lot of people did focus on that debate and on that criticism, whereas this time I haven't seen that that conversation come to the fore as much. So we shall see in the newspapers perhaps a bit later on mm -hmm. how that's been taken. But I yeah. think, they're, they're, I mean, it's, it's true too. I mean, the, people will completely find the grandchildren captivating tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all eyes will be on them. I think so. And I think what's really nice is it's all of the grandchildren. Yeah. Obviously, in the royal family, there's a pecking order, but the Queen had a really special relationship with all of her grandchildren. And I think to see them standing in a circle around the coffin, we're going to have William at the front um, with Zara and Peter, and then Harry at the back with Beatrice and Eugenie, and Louise and James, the youngest grandchildren, on the side. Mm -hmm. So I think that will be really nice. And family members obviously came and watched this vigil this evening and observed as well and were able to see the mourners filing past as it's, well. It's, what's interesting too is that Prince um, Edward um, came out with a statement saying that we've got to give um, her back to the public now. Mm. Um, and yet they're still managing to have, and the grandchildren around her is a lovely touch. Yeah. You know, it, it's okay, it's, it's fine for the kids, you know, her kids to be around her, but when you have grandchildren there, I think yeah. that, that brings back that whole emphasis on family. Definitely. And this has been the whole thing all along, hasn't it? The family and the personal grief that they're going through, coupled with this big public spectacle and the public roles that they have to play. And obviously that's something yeah. that the Queen was constantly balancing. 
thinking and so they are doing the same now um, but yeah I think it will be a really lovely moment Edward's statement was was really nice obviously the pecking order in the royal family he had to wait until now yeah. to release his statement um, but it was really touching and I think it, his children um, spent a lot of time with the Queen yeah. we saw yeah. Lady Louise horse riding alongside the Queen so definitely a special relationship there.